What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode I'm going to be creating some animated, interactive 3D design elements that I can implement into a website project. I'm going to be using Spline today as my 3D tool of choice, which is an amazing tool. It's easy to start using if you've never done 3D. You can create anything and everything you want. The sky's the limit. Your imagination can take off inside of 3D. We're going to be doing that inside of Spline and then directly applying and embedding our 3D design into our website using Webflow. So if you're interested in something like that, stay tuned because we're about to go 3D. Okay, I have Adobe XD open so you can show you my original file uh, that is just kind of like a two column layout form on the right and then design that I made inside of Photoshop on the left hand side. Uh, the problem with this is no matter <laughs> how good it works or how much auto animate and 3D you do in Adobe XD, it's gonna really be exported as a movie file. I want it to be more interactive and more three dimensional. So I've come over to Webflow. I've recreated my website. I have the right hand panel here, left hand here. And uh, I have an embed area that I've set up and all I'm gonna need to do after I'm done with my spline file is embed that code there and it should pop up. We'll see how it goes. Um, I have spline open, go to spline.design. I'm going to go ahead and open the app and start a new file by hitting that big blue button in the top right corner and we are ready to get started. I have a uh, rectangle on the screen. I'm just going to get rid of it. I don't need that. Everything we're going to do is going to be pretty three dimensional here. Uh, speaking of which, I have found a free 3D model of a Medusa sculpture. Now, it's not the same Medusa sculpture obviously, but this one is going to actually be three dimensional. This is uh, my mini factory where you can get like 3D printable items. Some of them cost. This one happens to be for free. So I just went ahead and downloaded that. And uh, I'm going to come up here inside of Spline and I'm going to import my 3D model. I have it on my desktop. It's called Bust of Medusa. There it is. And that'll just take a moment for Spline to do its work. OK, now uh, it's put something there. I'm going to go ahead and reset the camera and it's pretty it's pretty small, like on my screen. Right. You can see it there, but I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to select my uh, my Medusa sculpture and I'm going to just go ahead and lock the scale. I'm going to bring this up to two three maybe four uh let's go with five okay so now we have a nice big object and uh that looks pretty good now i'm using spline in the browser which is a new feature of spline which is absolutely amazing i i love using tools in the browser and when there's a tool in the browser as powerful as spline that allows me to do all of this right here from in the browser man i just cannot get enough of it so browser is the way for me now What's really cool here is uh, we do have some environment lighting going on on the right hand side, right? So if we turn the light off, you can see there's no light happening. And now all of a sudden there is a little bit of light happening, but we can change the intensity of that light if we want to, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and uh, we can turn off any and all ambient light. Um, okay, cool. So we, we've kind of messed with the environmental lighting, but um, in our original design file, it kind of had some directional lighting. It actually had kind of like some gradients going on um, that were just laid on top, but maybe we could do that with lighting here. So I'm going to actually hit my plus and I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to hit give me a directional light. Now you can see I have this light source that is in my scene. It's an object that can be moved around. I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to move it in front. So it's kind of hitting the right hand edge of my statue. It's pointing straight down currently, but you can manipulate how it kind of angles a little bit, right? By using these three internal dots. Pretty cool. We can move it over. We're digging it and just changing direction. And you can see that little helper is actually really, really helping us on where it hits our statue. Now we can take that directional light and we can make it a color. The top right was very, very pink in our design. So let's make this pink. Um, and uh, we can make it really pink like that if we wanted to. And maybe, maybe we move it off to one side. This is it's looking pretty cool. I actually really, really like this. I really just want to, it's not going to be exact. I just want to give it some cool kind of glow. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to call this one uh, pink light up in my layers panel. I'm going to copy and paste and do another, or you know what? That came out kind of wonky. So I'm just going to do another one like this. 
Uh, I want to add a little bit of, I think, animation to this thing. Um, so how about we do uh, a constant spin of this? So we're, we can make states and events in this top right hand corner. So I'm going to bring my Medusa up there so we can see it. Um, I'm going to create a new state. So we have the base state. That's how it currently is sitting. State number two, let's add some rotation and we'll add uh, 359 degrees of rotation. Uh, and then we'll do an event that says, right, new event on start. So as soon as this whole thing loads in my browser, we're going to start it. Uh, we want to repeat. Yes, we want linear easing and we want the whole thing to take about 10 seconds. Uh, so we should be able to press play and we get, look at that lighting continuing to work for us. Really cool. Now, the problem is the lighting is fixed in a group, right? Or, or like with the rest of it. Uh, the, with the statue itself, but that's okay. That works for us. Okay. So I'm just going to reset my camera, right? Put it right where we have it. I like it a lot. That is the beginning of something great. Uh, let's put our next piece in. I'm going to grab an orb, not a, not a circle, but a sphere, excuse me. And I'm going to draw out a nice cool looking sphere. Now in three dimensional space, I kind of want my sphere to be behind, uh, and like behind my statue of Medusa. Um, let's move it around just a little bit more and it looks really, really pink and really, really blue right now because it's kind of taken on that lighting, but that's okay. Um, you can actually see, you got to be careful in 3D space where you move things because it's starting to kind of fly into the back and then through our object, which is kind of cool, but I actually want a little bit of space. So I'm just going to space it out. There it is, just like so. And I'm going to do something kind of interesting. Instead of having a color, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a texture on this thing. And uh, it's important to note where you put lighting and texture, right? We drag these layers around. You can see I have my texture above the lighting. I'm not getting any of that dynamic lighting, which maybe you want or you don't. But if we put it below, we get that lighting taking place on the object. Let's grab our texture, upload an image. Um, and then I'm going to go in and find a, a little bit of in some assets that we had. I had this really cool... Uh, like Tron landscape type asset. And you can see that it's kind of being used in the background here. So I'm going to reuse that. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it's pretty close, pretty cool. I like it. I like it as is. Now, um, what do we want to do with this? Right now, our statue is kind of moving around, which is cool. How about we do something on hover with this one? So we'll say, hey, state one is uh, base state there. State two uh, why don't we do some rotation this way, that way, and then we will scale it to 1.2, 1.2. So the orb will get bigger and we're going to create a mouse hover event on the sphere. We don't want to cycle or repeat only when it's hovering and we'll do that in a second. So we should be able to come here and get a little bit of interaction out of this thing, which is pretty rad, pretty fun. Okay. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. So far, so good. I'm going to move my, uh, my Medusa over to the left just a little tiny bit like so. Uh, and then uh, what else do we have? Maybe we had some other textures we wanted to put in there, or maybe we just want to create some other cool shapes. Let's do some other cool shapes. That could be fun. I'm going to drag another uh, sphere onto my canvas here and I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one. Well, I'm going to do first, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to go to texture. I'm going to grab a texture that I really like. I had kind of like this oil slick texture, which I really dig, but I'm going to add a new type of material. So let me zoom in so we can see this. Um, I'm going to add a type of material called displace. Now I'm going to make sure that it's underneath the lighting. So we're capturing the lighting. But what Displace is going to do is it's going to affect the entire area of my sphere. I can displace it out a certain amount. Like I like that. I want it to be just kind of soft. That's kind of nice. This lighting is kind of harsh. So I'm actually going to jump more to a physical lighting and drop the lighting down just a little bit. Maybe something like 30. Look, that physical lighting gets a little bit more of the gleams and glares on it. And when I go to Displace, I'm actually going to hit the icon here and I can scale my uh, my shape or like all the displacement of my organic shape as much as I want, I can actually create movement, which I want to do actually 
in, through animation. So I really like this shape that we have cooking here. And you can see because there's lighting, it's casting shadow depending on where it's at in my scene. So I don't want that. I want it to be kind of behind so it's not casting too much shadow over my Medusa sculpture. We like it. It's a little bit big. I might shrink this whole thing down, which changes the way that my displacement looks, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to keep it right there and just go up maybe a little bit more beautiful. Let's create a state. Um, and uh, we have state one, state, excuse me, base state and state one. Let's go back into displacement and do some movement. So we'll just get this kind of wobbly effect. I just drag that over. And I want it to constantly wobble. And this time I'm going to have it kind of like uh, on my event. We'll do this on start. And it's going to cycle, rewind, and repeat. Ease in, ease out. Let's do something like uh, seven seconds for that. So it will constantly be wobbling. And if I hover over my orb, we get some of that. And again, the whole thing is in 3D, which is pretty pretty fun. It's coming together, I'm digging it. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is a little bit of custom modeling. Um, and it's a new feature inside of Spline. It's really, really fun. So I'm just gonna grab a cube and I'm gonna drag that onto my scene. And uh, I'm gonna move around so you can see it in three-dimensional kind of space here, drag it out. Uh, what I wanna do is I want to come into my shape. I wanna hit smooth and edit in this right-hand panel on the side. And it's gonna allow me to create some subdivisions. I'm just gonna keep mine flat because I think that is gonna work for me. All it's doing is creating more divisions and, and surface or different facets basically for me to work with. Once I've done that, I now have almost like an illustrator. You can double click on any of these objects to get a new set of tools up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, we have the face tool, which will allow us to grab one of our faces and stretch it out. And in doing so, we create new faces, right? And we can grab this one, you can almost build like, uh, like all these really fun, like geometric shapes. And you're being really, really like, it looks like a Tetris piece, which is really fun. You wanna build a Tetris piece, bam, you can do it just like that. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can affect the edge or the vertex, so the edge is, literally grabbing the edge there and pulling those out or the vertex which would be just the points right and we can again you can rotate any of these lift move change right if we go back to the face and select the face we can rotate these and get really really cool custom shapes but now we can also not only extrude and get like new versions of faces but we can also inset so I'm going to go ahead and uh, make an inset right here with my big blue handle. And then I'm going to grab the arrow and just push it in. Now we're creating like concave surfaces. And you can also loop cut, which means uh, just pick a side and it'll cut it into multiple kind of areas, which is nice. So now we can mess with any of those edges and sides and vertex. Okay, so we've got a pretty cool shape here that we've made. We want to get it into our design. It's pulling in some of that lighting from the scene. Uh, but why don't we give this a cool color? And uh, I'll actually, um, I was going to mess with the blending modes, but we don't really need to. Uh, why don't we just take the lighting of this down a little bit so it's not so intense, because that's really intense lighting. We can give it a texture and play around with this thing. And look, by getting more subdivisions, now we're creating more of an organic shape, which is actually kind of cool. It looks like a really cool tube or straw. So why don't we work with that? Um, and we'll bring this color down so it's not so intense right that's kind of a cooler looking color it's not so cartoony let's bring the size of our element that we've created at, down a little bit and move it into our scene and again we don't want it to dominate the scene so we're going to move it back behind our medusa um so it just has a little bit of fun like dimensionality there okay let's make one more thing and maybe we'll add some glass elements into our design i'm going to hit plus and use all these really fun uh, pre-created shapes. I'm going to pick a torus, which is basically how we would start building a donut. Um, <laughs> love that. Uh, and instead of color, you can see down here, I'm going to pick a new one. Remember, we messed with displace and texture. Uh, we can do gradients and noise. I'm going to add a little bit of noise in here. And then I'm going to do another one. And this one is going to be glass. Um, and I'm going to make sure the lighting is on top. And when I move my shape near my design, we're getting a little bit of noise and we're getting a little bit of a glass vibe to it as well. So let's actually slice our donut a little bit and I'm going to add, I think that works for us. I'm going to rotate this thing. So I like the donut piece up there and I'm going to pop this in. I might leave it on top of my Medusa, which will make it kind of interesting. 
And let's press play and see what our scene looks like right now. So we're able to scale around, move around. And uh, when we hover over our globe, that happens, right? We get a little animation. I'm gonna reset the camera and we're setting the camera like so. And maybe we can add just a few more pieces of animation to our torus and to our custom shape. So now I'm ready to actually embed this thing into my Webflow project or into your website. It doesn't just need to be Webflow. I'm gonna hit export, give me a public URL, hide the logo. Yes, we wanna be able to rotate. Limits, N yes, let's put, uh, oh, let's no, we'll put no limits on it. Turntable, yes, pan, zoom, all that fun stuff. So it's super duper fun and interactive. Spline's gonna do the magic for us. It's gonna create a public URL and an embed code. Uh, the public URL is exactly what it sounds like and go see it on the web. The embed code is actually what we're after so that we can actually just pop it right into that embed spot. So there it is, it's an iframe. I'm gonna grab the whole thing and copy it. I'm gonna come over to Webflow, open up that embed, pop in the code, save and close, and preview in the browser, so to speak. There it is. And we get full kind of like edit capabilities or excuse me, pan and zoom and rotation capabilities out of this thing. And it's all happening in 3D. And I think that that is a way cooler kind of NFT experience if you're going to log into this bad boy. Lighting, rotation, interaction, animation, all that stuff right there using Spline, popping it into our project. Well, that's it. That's how you use Spline to make cool, amazing, interactive, animated 3D elements and pop them right into your projects and they work like a charm. I wanna say a big thank you to the folks over at Spline for sponsoring this video. It's a really cool tool. You should go check it out. You can get started for free today. Links to them are down in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one about 3D or design or Spline comes out. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments. I hope you are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. I hope you're making amazing things. Stay inquisitive, creative. We'll see you in the next one.